great to be here in uh, Las Vegas. Um, my first time in the U.S. since we've been a public company. We started trading on the TSX in January. And as Misha said, just started trading in the U.S. end of March. So uh, as Misha touched on, there's a company called Renner Silver. I'm not sure if people are familiar with, but we set up Renner Silver in 2018 with Dr. Peter McGall, the co-founder of MAG. Took two assets out of Mag Silver that have been sitting there from day one in Mag getting very little attention, uh, Gigi and Bada Pilas. And as we got to know Peter better, he said, look, there's great potential in northwestern Mexico for gold exploration. So we've put together over 57,000 hectares on the two major gold trends in northwestern Mexico. We put together what we think is a world-class exploration team, and the initial capital we raised was $13.6 million. So we're very well capitalized and looking forward to making some big discoveries in northwestern Mexico. Um, so, touching a bit further on the, on the concept of the company, a lot of gold has been produced from the west coast of America. Actually, about 5% of the gold ever mined has come from California, Nevada, and Arizona. And then if you look at the mines and the exploration, it basically stops at the Mexican border. Uh, particularly prior to NAFTA in 1994, there was very, very little work going on in Mexico. Actually, Dr. Peter McGall was one of the one of the, the few foreign exploration geologists working in Mexico prior to signing up NAFTA. Uh, he's been there since 1979 and really is, is you know as good an insight as any foreign exploration geologist into the potential in this part of the world. Um, the likes of La Herradora, which is the biggest gold mine in Mexico, has now been discovered on the Mojave Sonora Megashare trend where our flagship property is. There's now almost 16 million ounces of gold being discovered at La Herradora produces around half a million ounces a year, is the biggest gold mine in Mexico. And Peter refers to these kind of deposits as elephants. Where there's one elephant, there's generally more than one. So that's why we focus on this part of the world. There's also multiple deposits greater than 5 million ounces on the trend. And we'll get into the details, particularly about the Gloria property, where we've got 24,000 hectares, a lot of gold at surface, a lot of gold-hosted quartz veins, a lot of breaches at surface, showing we're sitting hopefully on a, on a big system. Uh, in addition to Dr. Peter McGall, we also have Doug Kerwin involved. Doug was the VP of Exploration for Ivanhoe Mines for 17 years, worked for Robert Freeland for 17 years, an uh, achievement that not many people can do, and uh, uh, discover for Robert the Orotogo Mine in Mongolia, most famously. Um, and then under the guidance of Peter and Doug, we've got a very strong local Mexican team, all hired from the major operators from Fresnillo, uh, Agnon Colegal, Alamos Gold, you know, high, high caliber local Mexican geologists on the ground. Um, we've touched on this slide, I'll skip through this, win this part of the world, but really the potential we see is vast. You know, we're not looking for small things. We've tied up large land packages. We're looking for multi-million ounce uh, gold discoveries and potentially polymetallic. And we'll, we'll get into La Gloria. We're actually finding a lot of copper and silver also in the initial work we're doing at La Gloria. So a lot of potential in this part of the world. You can see now Sonora is by far the biggest gold-producing state in Mexico and is also the biggest copper-producing state in Mexico. It's really becoming a heart of mining in Mexico, and three of our four properties are in Sonora. This is our capital structure. In total, we've got 66 million shares on issue. Um, unfortunately, our share price is a little bit lower than this. Is the whole sector, this is, was 32 cents when I started out two weeks ago, and now we're about 25. So we're trading at a market cap of around 16 million with 9.6 million in the bank. I mean, really, we're on sale right now. Um, I wish I could buy. We're, we're not in a position to do so right now, unfortunately, uh, because we've got ongoing drilling. But definitely in a situation from a capital perspective, we're very well capitalized. Our burn rate is about half a million dollars Canadian a month at the moment with the ongoing drilling. So well positioned to get us through at least 2022, unless we substantially ramp up drilling, which we might do in the latter half of uh, 2022, maybe bring on the second rig around September. 34% um, of register was institutional and going public. A number of the shareholders that supported us on Rainer Silver and Cassia Gold, also a company we have uh, that has done quite well, came into the financing. When we, when we started the OPI financing, we wanted to do 5 million, raise 5 million. We actually raised 10.5 million. So very good response from the, from the shareholders uh, that are already on board and the number of new shareholders came in. Interestingly, a lot of money didn't come from North America. Most of the money actually came from Europe and Asia. I'm based in Hong Kong. And uh, only EMA, uh, Lawrence Leopard's fund out of Boston, came in from North America. The rest of the institutional shareholders are from uh, Europe and Asia. This is just a little bit more about Doug and Peter, both two world-class exploration geologists 
both made major discoveries, both have won the prestigious uh, Thea Lindsay Award at PDAC. Um, Peter for uh, Juan Escipio for Mag uh, Silver's discovery and Doug for Otogo for the, for the Ivanhoe Mine discovery that's now part of Rio Tinto. Peter's really an expert in Mexico. Uh, he's been there since 1979, a great, a great knowledge into Mexico, the geology, the people, and also has a very strong local Mexican team operating for him as well in Mexico. And then Doug is really a great expert in, in disseminated gold systems. Doug has got great knowledge on the Carlin trend, and you'll see our, our property on Mojave, Sonora, is, is very similar. We're looking at a disseminated gold system uh, as well. Under the guidance of Peter and Doug, we've got a strong local Mexican geological team. Ariana Navarro, uh, oops. is a VP of Exploration. Ariel is a third generation uh, geologist from Sonora. Uh, great to have him leading the team on the ground. He, he really has put together a world-class exploration team, all hired from the majors. Uh, Hadel Garcia has joined from Fresnillo. He was working at La Herradora, just up the road, the biggest gold mine in Mexico, and also previously worked at Al Chinade, just south of us, two kilometers south of our Alacura project, where almost two million ounces of gold have been discovered. And then we're also blessed to have the guidance of Dr. Peter Jones, the founder of Hud Bay Minerals, is on the board. Uh, Peter founded Hud Bay, was twice CEO. Great to have his guidance uh, steering us. He's been in the industry a long time. And also Steve Letwin, uh, former CEO of Iron Gold, is an advisor to the company. Uh, we also have Dr. Castello Molina on the board. Castello was running core mining in Mexico till 2020. Also a geologist by background and has built a good, uh, good rapport with the technical team on the ground. This is our four-property four portfolio. Um, La Gloria is the core, core focus of the company now. We're drilling there right now, 24,000 hectares. And when we were looking for a property, we actually wanted something uh, with a lot of good exploration targets already identified on the property. So La Gloria has over 40 historic Spanish mines on the property, which, as is often the case in Mexico, we're using as an exploration guide. And then there's a lot of gold at surface. Well, just initial sampling. We'll go through it. I've got a slide, but we've got a lot of high-grade sample results from surface. We've also got a lot of positive sample results. In this part of the world, most of the deposits are heat bleach deposits. Uh, you don't need stellar grade to make it economic. So we're using a cutoff of about 0.1 in our exploration, and you'll see in certain parts of the property, we're getting up to 80% of the samples coming back uh, with economic gold uh, sample results. Um, then the geology is very similar. We're finding the same host rocks. We're finding the same style as mineralization as the big deposits on the trend. So ticking a lot of initial boxes at La Gloria and really becoming more and more the focus of, of the company. Um, Aldo Rasna is also a substantial property, 24,000 hectares, again, similar size to La Gloria, over on the Sierra Madre Gold and Silver Belt, right by two big operating mines, La India and Molatos. And that's probably a second, second phase property that we'll look at potentially uh, later down the line, but really focuses on La Gloria for now. And then finally, La Santella, Don Porfilio, both around 4,000 hectares, substantial land packages with some good targets already identified by the team. This is now the Mojave Sonora Mega Shear. Comes down from California into Sonora. Over 35 million ounces of gold have now been discovered on the trend, mainly since the signing of NAFTA in 1994. Uh, Ross Beattie's Equinox Gold have taken over the uh, Mesquite Mine just across the border in uh, California, had a lot of exploration success substantially increased the resource there. They've also brought on another mine further up on the trend called Castle Mountain. But we're really focused in and around the city of Caborca, what the locals call the Caborca Gold Belt, where the six operating mines, we're right in the heart of those. Here's our property, uh, La Gloria. This is now just zooming in. And I think a key thing for exploration that a lot of investors overlook is infrastructure. You can find an amazing deposit, but if it's in the middle of nowhere, you're going to have hundreds of millions in infrastructure costs. We really couldn't ask for a better location from an infrastructure perspective. Right by Al Chinale, which was just being mined out by Alamos Gold in 2020, is sitting there on care of maintenance. Uh, just north of the city of Caborca, uh, which is really a mining town, most of the, the, the workers on the train live in Caborca, commute up and down. There's an LAS prep lab in Caborca for SA and lots of other mining labor and services. So... Delighted with the location, good access to electricity, good access to water, ticks all the boxes from that perspective. It's about 200 kilometers north to the U.S. border. You can also drive up on Highway 2 up to the U.S. border. 
This is now an overview of our LaGloria property, uh, 24,000 hectares on the Mojave Sonora Megashear. The regional trend runs northwest, southeast, and you can see we have these two regional fault lines map running parallel across the property, totaling over 75 kilometers on our property. This is a substantial property. Um, if you look here at the bottom, here's the, here's the scale of five kilometers. So this is, a, this is a big, 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 big property, and we're finding gold all over it. So very, very excited with the initial work. You can see all the historic mines scattered all across the property on the trend. Uh, we're focused in and around the main zone area at first. Uh, and the, the initial exploration plan over this first three to six months is to expand out in this western part of the property. But this eastern fold is also a very fascinating part of the property. The Alcinelli mine sits just two kilometers south on the Alcinelli fault line. And definitely a lot of interesting targets over on the eastern part as well. This is just highlighting some of the surface samples that we've got, and you can see some stellar grades. We've got up to 93 grams from a quartz vein at surface, 36, 42, 24, 20 can go on. Multiple, very high grade uh, surface samples. And from the big pit area, which is a known retrograde zone, uh, we had almost 80% come back positive gold grade. So a lot of gold at surface, uh, really starting to understand the system. And what the team started to identify, particularly in the last month or so, that this is polymetallic. We're starting to get some very good copper, silver, lead, zinc grades as well. So starting to see that this is a substantial system, uh, which has had definitely multiple phases of uh, mineralization occur on, on the property. Um, this is now our initial drill plan. We're, drilling is ongoing. A total of 36 holes are outlined on, on this slide. This is about 4,000 meters of drilling. Initially planning on pretty shallow holes, uh, around 100 meters. The, the first uh, priority from the team is to build up bulk mineralization close to surface, which in this part of Mexico is very economic. Um, if we can build up uh, deposits within kind of two, 300 meters from surface, show it's heat bleachable, you know, it's very economic. For example, just to give you some perspective, the Alcinate mine sitting just two kilometers south, that plant was designed to process 125, well, produce 125,000 ounces of gold per year. It cost $35 million to build that plant in 2006. So we're not sitting here looking at a, a capex, you know, in the region of a billion dollars. So the aim is to initially build up a deposit in the region of half a million to a million ounces. Then the economics on that project will be very attractive. But we believe we've got a lot more on this property than that. We want to build up some bulk tonnage close to the surface first, but then we definitely want to start to understand the system and hopefully show a substantial uh, uh, mineral endowment on the property. Um, the initial drilling that we focused on, uh, we did 14 holes in this main zone area here. We've actually released the first eight holes, and I'll, I'll get onto that shortly. Um, the big pit area is a, a known retrograded zone, running actually against the regional trending. So again, we've got mineralization not only running on the regional trending, you can see these red lines here identify quartz veining at surface. Uh, gold hosting quartz veining at surface, uh, but we're also finding gold mineralization running against the regional trend. So mineralization running in multiple directions, multiple different styles of mineralization, ticking a lot of the boxes that we've got a big system here. Um, we're, we're currently actually on drill hole, we just completed drill hole 20. Uh, here, here we have a collection, we can zoom into this shortly, we have a collection of three quartz veins, gold hosting quartz veins at surface running on the trend. And you can see we're putting 14 holes into this. The team, the geological team is quite excited about this developing area. And just to give a scale perspective again, from down here, the quartz vein identified here, at the Las Amarillas vein, up to here is about three kilometers in length. Uh, so again, a substantial area. And then definitely excited to start moving east as well towards the regional fault line to start to drill some of these uh, additional targets over the coming weeks. These are the initial eight holes that we put out, just 710 meters of drilling, but we got the results back and put them out to the market a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the, the known retrograde zone, great to show extensions both northeast and southwest of where the known mineralization was. Drill hole one went into the body of known mineralization. Everything else was a step out. And delighted to be getting uh, basically eight meters of four grams gold from surface. In this part of the world, that's very, very economic gold. Um, and also extensions both uh, south southwest and then also looking further south. And what we were delighted to show is the, the development of quartz veining in this part of the property as well. That's never previously been identified. The team's now tracked uh, this uh, Lassamulus vein 280 meters at surface with some very good gold uh, grades up to 8.6 grams per ton. 
with, with silver, copper, lead, zinc as well included. So that, that these, these drill holes seven and eight were designed to hit this vein about 40 meters from surface. We now intend to go back and drill at greater depth, probably about 100 meters from surface. The team expands, the, the, the vein will get thicker and heavier at depth. This is basically a vertical vein. It's a, it's a, it's a vein at surface, coming to surface, and it's pretty much vertical. So good indication it's a deep vein. And then we obviously want to understand also what's feeding this vein as well at greater depth. This is now zooming in to the Lesser Munos vein. And as mentioned, lots of historic uh, uh, mines on the property. And again, we've used these historic mines as an exploration guide. You can see there's two historic mines here. We did surface sampling around these historic uh, mines. This is a 93 gram, this was a 93 gram sample. This was a 36 gram sample. So based on that, that initial work, that initial observation, then we started drilling and got some good initial drill results. And we expect to continue tracking this, this vein uh, uh, both directions. One, one thing that really excites the geological team as well on the property is the amount of what the geologists call cover. So this is in the Sonoran Desert. It's very flat terrain. There's a lot of uh, desert sand. And you know, we're blessed that we have outcropping at surface, but there's probably a lot of mineralization that doesn't outcrop at surface that we can start to identify uh, with a, based on this initial drill work. Um, another key point to point out on both of these drill holes is there's a lot of stacked veins around this main vein. Particularly on drill hole eight, we had from six meters to 87 meters, seven veins around this main vein, all stacked within no greater depth uh, distance from 15 kilometers from 15 meters, sorry, from each other. So again, great to see stacking of vertical veins, which uh, helps with the economics of mining uh, if this was done in an open pit method. This is now moving on to the brechated zone. This is a cross section. The, 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 the orangey color at the top is sandstone, which is gold hosting. Then the hydrothermal breccia is the pinky area, gold hosting. And then we've got a tectonic breccia here, which is gold hosting, but lower grade. But you can see multiple different styles of host rock here, hosting gold and some good intercepts. This is the, this is the eight meters of four, uh, four grams. Here we had a continuous intercept of 30 meters at 0.5. And then down here, actually, you can see the better, the better grading was down here in the tectonic breccia. This is now moving into the area that we're drilling at the moment, where we've got the three known veins at surface. Uh, in total, the veins have already been tracked at surface uh, 460 to 480 meters. So these are quartz veins at surface, gold hosting quartz veins, drilling right now, and definitely looking forward to getting back these initial drill results. Also polymetallic. Uh, a lot of the sampling we've got here, you can see, we've got up to 64 grams silver, half a percent copper. So some good, good, some good uh, copper and silver grades also at surface. And the uh, team's very excited about this developing part of property. This is now some mag work that's been done in the uh, Alsenborough area. And you can see we've got a number of targets. The main ones being this one here, which is about two kilometers in length and one kilometer width from this one here. And we, this is where we're drilling right now with the initial work, but definitely want to start drilling around these uh, target areas with the additional holes planned in this part of property. And the regional fault line kind of runs here. And again, as we get closer to the regional fault line, we expect to find more and more interesting uh, developments in the property. The, the, the thesis the team's working on at the moment is that that regional fault line has been a controlling structure of the mineralization in this part of the property. But uh, this, this area in total is about 20 uh, square kilometers, uh, 2,000 hectares. So a big, big property. Uh, just this by itself, just one of the target areas is a substantial target area for, for the team. Um, now, just zoning out, but going back to the property as a, as a whole, uh, this is the mineral alteration mapping that we've had done. And these are the different minerals that you find associated with orogenic gold. And you can see we're blessed to really have them all over the property. This is the main zone where we're working right now. But definitely the team is very interested by all this development north of, of the target area we're here. And particularly this western part of the property is covered. So it's great to start to see under this cover some good alterations, which are providing some good targeting for the team on the ground. We're now doing some mapping and sampling up here at La Republicana and over here in Western. And I expect to develop a number of drill targets to be followed up on uh, later in the year. But you can see even over on this eastern part of the property, a lot of good targets. And, and what we've had done based on this uh, alteration mapping is this uh, alteration corridor map. And we know we have good mineralization running on the regional trend northwest southeast, really from down here at San Pedro all the way up into El Sombrero and potentially further. But what this also really highlighted the team was the potential we have running northeast southwest as well. We have some good alteration corridors here 
hopefully find some good uh, mineralization in this initial sampling work and follow-up drilling. And then, you know, really starts to open up potential of a big deposit here at La Gloria. So just to summarize and, and finish up, uh, we're in the process of an initial 10,000 meter drill program. That'll cost us about 2.5 million Canadian dollars. Uh, we have about 9.6 million Canadian dollars in the bank today, so well financed. We'll most likely expand the drill program later in the year. Uh, probably bring on a second rig, uh, maybe around the time of September. In addition to that, we have um, substantial mapping, sampling, and trenching work being done on the property. We have uh, two teams focused on that and one team focused on drilling for now and finding more and more drill targets, literally day by day. I, ha I have a technical call at 8 p.m. tonight with the team, uh, looking forward to getting their weekly update from the guys. And uh, really focused on this developing trend from, from San Pedro up to La Republicana, where we're finding the quartz veining running at surface on the regional trend. It's about 16 kilometers in length already identified of this quartz veining at surface. And this is kind of the core focus for now. We're definitely interested to find more breaches. I'm sure there's going to be more breach-rated zones on the property and potentially other, other, other mineralization styles on, on this big, big property. So highlights, we've got, we've got sedimentary and metasedimentary host rock uh, on the property that is holding uh, disseminated gold, veins, veinlets. Great to see. That's what we wanted to see on the property. We've got shear zones. We've got high angle structures, which is great to see on an orogenic system. You know, most orogenic mines have high, high angle structures to bring the gold up close to surface to make it more economic. And then really great infrastructure on the property. Couldn't ask for a better location from an infrastructure perspective. And we're, and we're blessed to really have a world-class technical team. Those you can see already making a lot of good discoveries at the beginning of the, of the Rainer Gold story. So that's the overview. Uh, I don't know if we, how we're doing for time, if we've got a bit of time for Q&A. Okay, great. great. So thank, thanks, for, thanks for listening. Okay. Um, uh, Peter Pagan and Douglas Kerwin, very pretty faces, but I know that they're not just a pretty face. Um, what, how involved are they in the day to day uh, vision? Of where do they provide their advisory? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's really Peter's vision. The, co the company is Peter's vision. He believes there's good deposits to be found in this part of the world. Doug generally joins a Whitney technical call. He's, he, he, he actually, his first site visit after getting fully vaccinated was to La Gloria last September. Uh, he's very passionate about the project, understands the potential, uh, and uh, yeah, is it, giving good insight, building a good relationship with the team on the ground. So great to have both of them involved. They're both very passionate about the project. They understand the potential and want to see you know, success achieved. So, uh, it, but the team is a lot more than just those two guys. Really, the technical guys we have on the ground are world class. You know, they're, they're a great, great team that's been put together, been involved in major discoveries in Sonora before, and, you know, want to do the same again. So very happy with the way things are progressing. Yeah. Sorry if I missed it. Back. So it was at 40. Yeah, yeah. So it was at 40 cents uh, with a half one at 65. It was actually done last August. It was subscription receipts done last August. We started trading in January. But, yeah, the stock is, I think, 25 today. So, um, uh, yeah. A nice discount to that. Do we have any other questions? So uh, you said you, you might bring on another drill. Um, I know that in this environment, inflation is an issue, cost inflation is an issue. Um, and if I remember back to you know, uh, 20, 20, 2011 or 2012, uh, 2011, I guess, when the last time I talked out. Um, uh, so, what is your flexibility in your case? You just go yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, look, uh, again, it's local relationships. Ariel and uh, Peter and Rafa are very good friends with the owner of the drill company that we use, or drilling out of Hermosillo. We didn't even put a deposit down on our rig, right? We get the rig when we want it. They've told us, you want a second rig, no problem. Uh, so, I don't think we have too many issues. We use them on other projects as well. We have a very good relationship with them. So not expecting any issues there. And uh, just, I guess, a quick uh, exploration uh, um, question is, uh, what's the cost of that? Shallow yeah, hole, right? 118 US dollars per meter, $30 for casing when we need it, which is not always required here, and then SA, about $30 SA. So you know, very economic.
Great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah.